What's up everybody, Bandit Chad here for another Taco Tuesday. So uh, we've been covering our trucks pretty extensively for the past year since we got them. Uh, again, I do have a TRD off-road with the access cab, which does come with a six foot bed. Chad has the double cab TRD Sport, and then he opted to go with the six foot bed on that. So that truck is about one foot longer in wheelbase and an overall length. And uh, we've had a couple different people ask about how they drive differently and everything like that. Well, we've done our driving impressions and everything else by this point, but we do want to cover how they actually are at slow speed maneuvers, how they are to park, and the turning radius difference. So here's how we're going to test this. We're going to take the loggers tape here and hand Chad the side with the reel. I'm going to stand here at the starting position with uh, the end of it, and we'll see exactly where he meets up when he passes this line here on this side, goes to full lock with the steering wheel, and ends up farther down there. Now again, this would be more of a turning diameter, I guess, but it is kind of a real world experiment on how this could work. So Chad, at full lock, we'll go ahead and hand him the reel, start driving, we'll see what happens. So I'll stand here, go ahead. Twenty five feet. Alrighty, what's it say? We're at twenty feet two inches for the access cab. Okay, twenty feet two inches for the access cab for one full turn. So the results that we found were that obviously the double cab long bed did have a wider radius. Mine was at about 25 feet, his was at about 20 feet. So that is what, about a 20% difference? Exactly. So again, this isn't exactly how the manufacturers rate uh, turning radius. Really, again, this is more of a turning diameter, uh, but it does give you kind of a real world look at the difference between these two trucks. Obviously the access cab with the long bed or the double cab with the short bed do share the same uh, chassis length and everything else so they would turn exactly the same at least in theory right. uh, here in the longer truck the double cab long bed it is a little bit of a difference like Chad was just saying and uh, while five feet doesn't exactly sound like a lot it really does come into play sometimes you know when you're trying to make that turn into a park a tight parking space or uh, mm -hmm. whether you're on a trail or something like that uh, the difference does come up occasionally now it's not a huge difference and it's still a lot better than full-size trucks by a long shot, but it is just something to be mindful of if you're between these two trucks. So now we'll transition into some news from around the automotive industry this week. So uh, we'll start with Ford, and it looks like sometime around 2019 or 2020, somewhere around in there, it looks like the Ford Explorer and the Lincoln Navigator, which are more or less the same vehicle, you know, kind of like a Chevy and Cadillac type uh, relationship there. And uh, it looks like they will be going for a hybrid system there on those vehicles. Now we're expecting it just to be a mild hybrid system, you know, nothing too uh, invasive or not like a plug-in hybrid or anything like that. Uh, but it is really interesting, you know, those are some pretty large SUVs and they're not really regarded as a great MPG uh, SUVs. So hopefully they can get those numbers up a little bit there with those hybrids. Right. Also, for around the 2020 model year, um, we are expecting the Ford Bronco to make a debut. So, there was what we are going to be calling a Bronco Mule um, seen out there in the wild, and it's not what we're expecting the body to look like. It is actually what appears to be a current escape of some sort, but underneath is what we think they are really testing. So, underneath all the camouflage and all the other stuff, we're thinking that they were testing powertrain. So whether this is gonna be a diesel powertrain, um, a regular gasoline option, um, as well as maybe a different transmission, different types of axle ratios, different things, is what we thought we saw out there in the wild. Exactly, and a few weeks ago, we did talk about how Ford was actually conducting a new design study, and that the people that they were polling were basically saying that the Bronco looked very, very similar to a Jeep Wrangler. So we are still expecting that vehicle to have a removable top, kind of a more rugged design and everything else. Uh, but again, this mule was just basically, uh, looked like a little bit stretched version of a Ford Escape. So, um, you know, we're still not thinking that that's what the Bronco is going to be kind of uh, softened to be like. We're still thinking it's going to be kind of a hardcore SUV, kind of a hardcore off-roader, hopefully. Uh, but that remains to be seen. 
Uh, in some other news this week, uh, wouldn't be another week if we weren't going over some more Jeep news, but uh, the JL Wrangler truck, which uh, is codenamed the JT, uh, has been named, and they're actually bringing back the Scrambler nameplate. So the Scrambler was used a long time ago when uh, Jeep was first making those trucks, and it's really awesome that they'll be bringing back that nameplate again. Now, uh, there were some different CAD drawings and everything else leaked, and uh, they all showed the four-door JT pickup, meaning a four-door, and it looks like maybe a five-and-a-half or six-foot bed. Uh, nothing huge, but uh, I'm really glad they're at least making this truck. Now, unfortunately, it looks like the uh, there won't be any sort of uh, two-door variant or extended cab variant or anything like that. It looks like if you do want one of those, uh, you will have to go with the full four-door truck, uh, which will be um, kind of a sore spot for some people, but at least they are making this truck, and at least Jeep will have a truck in their lineup once again. Right, so related to some um, Fiat news in the same branch of uh, you know that side of the pond, um, Ram is releasing some new additions called the Harvest Edition for their 1500 and Heavy Duty Series trucks. And what you're going to see is you're going to see Case International Harvester colored red and you're going to see the New Holland Blue. New Holland Blue, that's right, thank you. Um, the New Holland Blue and along with that you are getting some more off-road oriented tires, shocks, skid plates, um, basically a off-road variant of Ram that you may already be able to purchase but with new colors. Now this isn't anything huge, anything different. These are just Harvester editions that they have teamed up with New Holland and International Harvester. Right and Ram has been really well known for doing a lot of these special editions. You know Chevy and Ford are the same way. It's really just any way to move more units. Uh, but if you do have a couple International sitting around your farm or a couple New Hollands, I think it'd be really sweet if your truck did match that. So um, you know it remains to be seen what exactly these will be priced like, but if they are priced competitively, it will be cool there for some people. So along with that Ford Bronco news, it looks like Chevy is gonna to try to get in on the mix with a new variant of their Blazer. So uh, the Blazer was killed out a few years ago. It transitioned to the Trail Blazer and then it was uh, killed out basically for good uh, and was replaced with the smaller Equinox and the larger Traverse. Well, it looks like now that especially Ford is bringing back the Bronco, Chevy wants to get back in there with the Blazer. Now, uh, it's been a long rivalry all the way back until I believe it was the late 60s between the the, Blanc the Bronco and the Blazer. And uh, so hopefully we'll have two uh, American-made off-road SUVs here on the market yet again. Now, uh, we don't know much about the Blazer, whether it is going to be you know an off-road SUV or whether it's just going to slot back in that gap between the Equinox and the Traverse. Uh, but it seems like at least GM finds the vehicle worth making and hopefully it lives up to its heritage. Now, uh, another story here from Toyota actually is Toyota engineers are actually working to eliminate the A pillar. Now, uh, you may have noticed, but in newer and newer cars, as uh, the restrictions get tougher and tougher to make vehicles safer, uh, the A pillars, B pillars, C pillars, and etc. are getting a little bit, you know, more beefy. They are hiding airbags and everything else in them now. And uh, Toyota's trying to eliminate that. Now, they are going to keep the actual structure of the A-pillar, but what they're actually working on doing is uh, having a series of uh, mirrors and everything else. So when you look at the A-pillar, the mirrors would redirect the light, and it has uh, the kind of the image of looking straight through it. So you'd be able to see what's behind that A-pillar, really helping to improve your visibility and everything else. Right, so um, one final piece of news that we have this week is Hyundai is going to be bringing their Santa Cruz kind of crossover truck to the United States. We're not exactly sure of a specific date that they're gonna be bringing that, but basically this may be a competitor for the Ridgeline, and you know, it's gonna probably be about the same size. Could be a front wheel drive biased truck, just like the Ridgeline. Um, we don't have every single detail of that truck ironed out, but more of that will come in the future. Right, and we did see that Santa Cruz concept a, a little while ago at one of the auto shows, right. and it is kind of a neat idea, you know? it's. I'm not gonna call it an El Camino, but it is certainly that sort of um, look and feel of the truck. You know, it's not a big rough and rugged type truck. It is more of kind of the, if you mix a every man crossover and a truck, that's kind of what you get. And uh, I think it could potentially sell really well for them if they execute it the way they could. So that pretty much wraps up everything we have to talk about for this week. Thank you all very much for watching. Have a fantastic week, everybody. We'll catch you next time. See you guys.